हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ हिस्ट्री वी आर स्टडिंग चैप्टर फोर्थ हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया आर्ट नव वी विल स्टडी पार्ट नाइन सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड दैट द मुस्लिम हैव इंट्रोड्यूस देयर आर्किटेक्चर इट इज द ब्लेंड ऑफ Persian and Asian, as well as Arabic and pre-Islamic style, and therefore uh, the um, style has been developed over here, and uh, the patronage, uh, Delhi Sultan, that is Akbar, had given the patronage to then this, and then Qutub Minar. at maurli at delhi taj mahal at agra gol gumbaj bijapur etc were created and and then so my dear student we had seen in the previous lecture qutub minar the tallest minaret in the world now we are going to study the taj Taj Mahal. So, let us see. The Taj Mahal was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his queen Mumtaz Mahal. So, it says that this is the the. symbol of love okay and it was built by emperor shah jahan in memory of his begum mumtaz begum the taj is looked upon as the paramount example of the beauty of islamic architecture in india so it is a beautiful structure the beauty is there it has been built and it has been built with the white marble and such a huge structure is been built four side four minarets and the stars stand in between uh, first of all let me tell you it is the graveyard of mumtaz begum but Uh, the grave i'm sorry the grave of muftaj begum but it is also the sign of love which uh, tells us that how much love sajan had towards his begum muftaj begum this world famous building has been declared as world heritage by unesco so this has been declare as world heritage let us move on to the next structure that is the gol gumbaj gol gumbaj this is the structure of gol gumbaj the gol gumbaj at bijapur in karnataka was built in the 17th century christian era so 17th century this was built this grand building houses the burial of muhammad adil shah of bijapur so muhammad adil shah of bijapur is buried over here so again it's the memorial of muhammad adil shah the grave of muhammad adil shah inside the dome after which the building is named the gol gumbaj there is a round gallery inside the uh, inside the dome even a slight whisper by a person standing in this gallery can be heard everywhere and it's if somebody claps from here 
its echo can be heard many times so this is the beauty of this gumbaj that is the dome even a slight sound or the whisper sound is made the sound is heard everywhere in the building inside and uh, the clap if you give the echo sound you can hear for several time and therefore it's the beautiful structure you can see the structure you can see the color combination um, the tall tallness of it yeah mm, even even you can uh, you can see the from ground uh, its story uh, the uh, almost uh, as high as the seven story building or uh, seven or eight story building and the uh, four side we have the smaller domes hmm? and these domes are been painted in gold gold color so this is the beauty of it the door you can see all the doors are so very beautifully um, made then the design on top the fine design which is made the latex work you can see here so that is the that adds to the beauty of gold gumbaz which is at present in japur karnataka during the british period my dear student a new architectural style arose in india it is known as gothic ar architectural style so gothic style was um, invented at that time and this gothic style is the is the blend of british and indian architecture buildings like churches government offices residences of top officials railway stations were built in this style during the british period so all such structures were built it is indo gothic style of architecture you can see the beauty of this um, uh, chhatrapati shivaji maharaj railway terminus at mumbai the beautiful structure over there the building of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj railway terminus mumbai is the finest example of the indo gothic architecture and it is a world heritage site so you can see this um, it is really good to see this structure yeah and gothic style is that triangular shape on top where the watch is even uh, both the side all all the sides uh, that means three side you can see the triangular shape on top yeah and then dome over it so this is considered as gothic style and um, indian style is also included in it and then we can see the chhatrapati shivaji maharaj terminus over there let us move on to the next topic my dear student that is the indian traditions of performing art so far we have seen the visual art now performing art traditions of performing folk art india has dependent and india has independent and varied tradition of folk song folk instrumental music folk dances and folk theater which are characteristics of every particular region so every region has uh, its own particular uh, folk style for example uh, if we say gujarat then um, gujarati um, uh, this um, uh, the dandiya dance then uh, rajasthan the ghumar then punjab the bhangra uh, maharashtra uh, the lawni and also the uh, koli dances so in this way every region has developed their own uh, style so 
there exists many rich traditions of performing folk art in maharashtra also they develop as an integral part of the religious festivals and social life to name a few as example we may mention koli dance tarpa dance tarpa dance is uh, performed in uh, the thane district at uh, adivasi district um, the the adivasis over there the whole night they play tarpa and drums and keep on dancing so this is considered as tarpa dance then the shautar of konkan which is quite famous the shautar povada kirtan jagran gondal these are all folk style so folk style of performing art so it is been performed people perform it and uh, some people watch it observes it so this is the uh, traditional performing uh, arts example that is koli dance tarpa dance uh, the shautar povada kirtan jagar gondal etc let us move on to the next topic that is tradition of classical performing art india has a rich heritage of classical performing art too the text of natya shastra written by bharat muni is supposed to be the earliest one discussing music and theater the nine moods that is nine rasa rasas supposed to be fundamental in the in the presentation of indian performing art so let us see nine rasas which are they first one is shringar that is love second hasya the humor bibhatsa repulsion rudra terrible karuna sad veer heroic then we have the next one bhayanak that is fearful or adbhut that is wondrous ascharya and shant that is peaceful so these are the nine rasas nine ras they are called or the uh, nine natya um, nine uh, rasas of performing art and these when they are performing these nine rasas are been depicted through their performances indian people came into contact with cultural tradition of other nations and that resulted into blending of many different streams in the presentation of indian performing art and reaching them over times so blending of different cultures and then we can see many different art forms as a result many style of presenting of classical vocal music instrumental music and dance came into existence various schools preserving those style were also created there are two main branches of the indian classical music so so let us see hindustani music and carnatic music similarly there are two forms of it classical that is shastriya and semi classical upashastriya the semi classical has included many styles of folk music a beautiful blend of all three forms of music vocal instrument and dance can be seen in various indian classical dance dance form like kathak of north india lawni of maharashtra then we have uh, we have the 
Odissi of Odisha, then Bharat Natyam of Tamil Nadu, Kathakali, Kathakali of uh, and Mohini Attam of Kerala. So you can see Kathakali here, the expression, the bhava you can see over here on their faces. Yeah. Then we can also have a look of Launi, the the beautiful style of uh, uh, posing them and dances. So these are several forms which are being performed in Maharashtra. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, in India. In India, in the post-independent period, various festivals of music and dances are organized with a view to make it accessible to common people. Many people attend these festivals including Indian and foreigner alike. The Savai Gandharva festival in Pune is famous one. So these are the festivals which are performed and they, are, they become famous. Many people from far and wide they go to uh, witness these festivals. Lately we can see an inclination towards experimenting and creating fusion of various music styles by trying to overcome the limitations imposed by a traditional style of school. Pandit Uday Shankar is a prominent name among such artists who created a new style. He successfully created a fusion of Indian classical dance and European opera. So both the style he has mixed together. He also included various forms of folk dance in style. Thus the scope of the presentation of Indian performing art seems to be constantly expanding. The same phenomenon is ap apparent in the field of Indian visual art. So uh, this is could be seen in the Indian visual art and um, quite a many different um, um, different niches is there and uh, experiments are being made. Pandit uh, uh, Uday Shankar has made the experiment uh, and uh, such experiments are still made and new and new forms are coming up. So my dear student, um, uh, today we will wind up with this note. In the next time we are going to study art, applied art and professional opportunities. So what opportunities we will have in mere future uh, by studying art, by, by studying several um, arts. So till then goodbye and have a nice time.